In a lot of ways, learning art is like going to the gym. If you want to see any results, you need to be consistent. It is a common saying in the online art community that to improve as an artist, you need to draw every day. And while I do think it's important to set a habit of being creative, this advice always felt hollow to me, especially when I started taking art seriously as a teenager. I mean, it is still decent advice in general if you want to improve with any skill, you have to set time aside to do it, and for a while, it does help you improve. You are able to familiarize yourself with the materials of your choosing, whether that's a pen and a sketchbook, or a graphics tablet, much like if you're going to the gym for the first time. It takes a while to get used to all the gym equipment. But there comes a point with your artwork, just like with the workout, where you inevitably hit a wall. Despite the many hours and days you spent trying to learn how to draw, it feels like you aren't improving, and this is part of an artist's journey that may cause you to have second thoughts on pursuing art in the first place. If you have had or are having these types of feelings regarding your artwork, this might be the video for you. I'm Ayasuna and I make videos, more specifically art videos, and today we are talking about studying. Not the boring, mind-numbing calculus type, but art studies. If you really want to improve your artwork, you will need to study the fundamentals of art. It's not simply enough to draw every day and expect instant results. Talent alone will only get you so far if you don't nurture the skills that can improve your work. That leaves me to my first tip of getting the most of your art studies, and that is to observe everything. Study from real life, whether it's people or landscapes, anything, and I mean anything, can be a good reference, and starting out when learning how to draw and understanding what you see will go a long way in recreating something that is 3D into a 2D format. Before you start drawing, take a few moments to look at the reference you are going to use. If you are studying anatomy, think about what you notice about the form or movement of the human body. For instance, here I was studying a specific pose, and before I started to draw, I made sure I understand what I was looking at. This doesn't just apply to human anatomy, it also applies to landscapes, objects, pretty much anything that you want to draw. Obviously, instructions change depending on what you're drawing, but understanding form and values is a general approach to drawing most things. As you develop your art skills, you might find you have an increasing eye for details, which is never a bad thing. Look at that ability as a superpower and use it to your advantage. Related to that first point is to take pictures. If you've been watching my live streams over on twitch.tv forward slash 19 I tend to grumble a lot about how hard it is to find a good reference online. It's becoming increasingly more difficult with AI art and other generated images, especially on Pinterest. I, once again, am asking Pinterest to add an AI filter to their search results. I am currently working on a project that deals with vintage hairstyles and vintage art and portraits, but a lot of the stuff that I found in my research is just AI slop. If they can filter out spam and botted content, then surely they can come up with something to deal with the AI situation. At least Google is a little bit better as you can filter out images before 2021, but even then that doesn't always work nowadays. For beginners, relying on AI images definitely won't be the best way to improve your artwork and understand the fundamentals. That said, I'm not anti-technology when it comes to art. Odds are you likely have a device in your pocket that's capable of taking photos or videos, so you might as well use it to build a visual library of references. Sometimes, despite scouring the internet for the reference that may influence your artwork, you might have a pot of gold in your own photo library. I mean, even great artists of the Renaissance didn't have access to a mini supercomputer at the palms of their hands. For instance, a few months back, I went to the museum and I took a bunch of pictures. Not just for memory's sake, but for future art references, I took pictures of things that I thought I could use. I've also done that for other places that I've been, I could use some of those images for future references. As well as inspiration. If you are out and about, or even if you're in your room and you see something cool, take a picture of it. 
Even if you have to flex your muscles in front of the mirror, it helps having a visual representation of a certain pose. Even specific lighting can go a long way with studying art. Even something mundane like a soda can or something like that can inspire you to draw something out of the ordinary. My third tip to improving your art studies is consistency. Now, do I think you necessarily have to draw something every day to improve? It definitely helps, but I don't necessarily believe it makes or breaks you as an artist. Let me cook here a little bit. If you're starting out, it's unrealistic to devote hours upon hours drawing every day. You likely have work or school and other obligations or limitations, so that is just unrealistic. That said, even if it's setting aside 20 to 30 minutes every day to draw something, I don't think that is too unreasonable for most people who want to get into the habit of drawing. Also, that 30 minutes isn't a hard or fast rule. Some days you may only want to draw for 29 minutes, others you may want to draw for an hour. The main reason why most artists suggest drawing every day is to form the habit. However, if you miss a day or two, don't beat yourself up, it happens. Now, not to sound too hypocritical, my fourth tip is that it's okay to take breaks. Sometimes we may just need to take breaks from the current piece we're working on and start something new. Other times, like I said, life happens and we may not always be in the right mindset to create something. If you feel pressure to draw something every day, then you'll quickly run into burnout. And like I mentioned, you may not want to do art at all. You know, this is less of a tip and more of a pet peeve of mine when it comes to the art community, at least online. But we tend to glamorize being unhealthy, and not just the mental aspect of it, but the physical aspect as well. Like I get it, it can be tempting to pull an all-nighter to draw your favorite anime ships and whatnot, but doing that over and over is not good for your long-term health. As artists, we tend to think of our art as the finished result and not necessarily the steps we took to get there. It's not just the materials we use or the techniques we learned, it's often ourselves included. It's not healthy to draw for multiple hours without getting up or stretching as that does lead to injuries. I know this for certain because several years ago during Inktober, I injured myself and gave myself tendonitis from drawing too much. Trust me, it's not worth. While it can seem less straightforward for improving your art, getting ample rest, stretching, and staying hydrated makes a world of difference. Odds are that that piece you hated at 3am likely won't look so bad when you return rested at 3pm. Tip number 5. You are too hard on yourself. As I said, mental health is an undeniable part of any creative outlet, for better or worse. Even classical artists likely didn't start making massive pieces on their first canvas or sketchbook, but we really need to think of art as a journey. And like any journey, it won't be linear. There will be ups and downs, your story will change and evolve, and that's normal. Don't buy into the social media hype that your art style will be some constant, unchanging entity, because that's just not the case for most artists. Even as someone who has been drawing for a while now, I still get into the bad habit of being a perfectionist. I started doing art well before social media was as widespread as it is today. It was hard to compare myself to other artists of a similar age range. I can't imagine how difficult it is now not to fall into the trap of comparing yourself to others. Pretty much the rule of thumb here is you can't compare someone else's art journey to your own. You will learn at your own pace, so it's best not to stress as much about it. To add on to that, it's never too late to learn art. For instance, my friend and one of my head mods, Select Para, go check him out, he's an awesome creator. He spent much of this year learning how to draw in his mid-twenties. As long as you have the patience and determination to learn how to draw, I don't see why you can start at pretty much any age. I've seen so many social media posts about artists who are reluctant to get back into drawing after many years, or those who just want to start in their 20s and 30s, thinking that they can't keep up with the younger crowd. But like I said, you can get into art at pretty much any age. 
If anything, having an increasing experience upon life itself might be a very useful resource when coming up with things to draw. You might approach something with a different perspective as opposed to someone in their teens or early 20s. Apart from sacred cultural practices, there really shouldn't be any gatekeeping when it comes to art. And saying otherwise kind of goes against what it even means to be an artist. My sixth main art tip here is to reach out if you are confused and don't know where to go. Obviously, social media for artists can be quite a vicious place between art theft and AI art and all everything in between. There are many different art discords and forums and other social media spaces to get input on your own artwork and converse with other artists. Just like with graphic design, being open to feedback and criticism helps you improve as an artist and you get to understand something from, again, a different perspective. Obviously, there's going to be jerks who just want to tear your art apart for their own gain, but more often than not, a lot of the criticism can be constructive. There are whole Discord servers dedicated to just critiquing art. But if you want something a little less personal, then there's R subreddits and other places you can go if you need help. Sometimes it can be hard to figure out what you need to fix in a piece if you're just staring at it on your own, and another fresh set of eyes can be more than valuable. I'm not saying all younger artists are like this, but some do feel a bit defensive about their flaws in their artwork. But it takes time and patience to understand that these criticisms aren't out of a place of malice most likely, they are in a place that wants you to improve. This was another lesson that I had to learn as I continued my art journey. You can criticize something without attacking it. And speaking of Discord servers, I made my own. The Artcade is a place where I talk about art and video games and everything in between, so if you're interested in that then don't hesitate to join. I'll have it linked in the description, and I'll also likely have it pinned to the top comment. And if you made it this far and want more instructional videos like this, then don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe. Going off on a bit of a tangent here, but one of my main goals with my art is to become an art instructor. But not like one of those pretentious art school teachers that everyone likes to complain about. I like hearing other people talk about their creativity and having the tools and resources to be able to do so is something that so many people lack. At least in the US, I mentioned it before, art education is severely lacking. While art is no substitute for actual therapy, I believe participating in art can also be therapeutic. And having a space where you can adequately express yourself is something that could probably help quite a lot of people out there. For a while there, art was pretty much all I had to improve my mental health. And while my mental health is still far from perfect, it's been a lot better when I knew I had a goal to work towards and was given space to work on the projects that I deeply care about. So any support in that goal would mean the world to me and hopefully turn this channel into something that could help someone else someday. Without getting too mushy, back to the main video. Number 7 goes without saying, but I'll say it again, you don't need expensive art supplies to get better. This is another common sentiment I see on social media saying that you can't learn how to draw a certain way because you aren't using expensive supplies. While certain techniques may be a bit more difficult, it's not at all impossible. In fact, for those beginning their art journey, I would caution against picking up more expensive options, especially if you're still trying to figure out the medium that is best for your workflow. There are plenty of reasonably priced student grade options available, so becoming an artist doesn't have to break the bank. I'd say this advice also generally applies to digital art too. You don't need a Wacom Cintiq to make banger digital art. A $30 to $40 graphics tablet is just fine until you're ready to make an upgrade, or if you have an old iPad slash tablet lying around, that is also a solid option. There is also free software available for those wanting to get their feet wet with digital art. Krita is one of many examples. There are professional artists out there who use Krita to make their artwork. 
So you should never feel limited by the supplies that you have, you can still make incredible artwork with it. Tip number 8 might depend on the person, but I figured that this was also important to include here, and that is setting goals. For me, it can be hard to start something if I don't exactly know how the end goal will be or what I'm exactly trying to achieve. Obviously, art as a career field is quite competitive, but I think we often lose sight of why we're even doing it in the first place. What that goal is definitely depends on your skill level. I don't really think that anyone just starting how to draw would probably feel confident in drawing a hundred different faces. I think it is important to want to challenge ourselves, but still, eat too much and you can end up with burnout. In my case, I tend to create a ton of original characters, but I don't really do anything with their story. So one of my goals with my art is to come up with a bookkeeper starter because that's one way I want to tell my stories with some of my characters. I know I want this story to be like a webtoon slash comic book type medium. So I've been researching a lot of manga slash comic books and figuring out what I wanted to do with the paneling. I've also been looking at a bunch of storyboard related stuff as that's something I'm not really familiar with. What I'm basically getting at here is that your goals should serve as a bit of a challenge to make you think in a way that you wouldn't normally think as an artist. But also apply that to something you generally find interesting. I was always a bit of a horror fan when it came to manga and anime and stuff like that, so I kind of wanted to take a spin at my own series. Now in my case, I don't have a specific timeline on how I want to achieve that goal, but I want to start working on it in the new year. I think if you're starting out, having a timeline is not as important depending on how fast you want to improve. Once you get into the habit of creating every day, then you can start to implement something more structured if you want to continue improving. Now I'm no expert myself and what works for me might not necessarily work for you. It can take many years to figure out what workflow works best for your art style. I myself am still trying to figure that out when it comes to digital art as you see here. So I've been trying to do many studies with different brushes and settings to see what I like when it comes to digital art. I think like I've said in many other videos thus far that we get too far caught up in social media and we often lose sight about why we chose to pursue art in the first place. Once you have a goal in mind and what you want to pursue with your artwork, it does get easier as far as figuring out what you need to practice on. And that leads me to my ninth point, and that is getting out of your comfort zone. I think another reason why we get into art block slash plateau is that we don't really challenge our creativity. Setting goals helps, but sometimes, even despite studying, you still might not feel inspired to do your own artwork. I feel like in my case, I tend to work better when I know I have certain limitations, whether that's the three marker challenge, I have to use certain emojis to make a character design, or other related challenges like Inktober. While creativity isn't something that you can teach on your own, I do suppose that it can help to get out of your comfort zone and make you think about art supplies and subject matter in a way that you might not have thought of before. I think this is especially true if you want to be a professional artist because you will be in situations that you're not used to. I don't think anyone's expecting you to be a master just starting out, but being well-rounded is never a bad thing. So experiment and try different things, try different challenges, just create something. And that leads me to my 10th and final point in this video, and that is embrace your failures. I feel like this was always a huge hurdle for many artists, and even more so with the advent of social media. Like I said earlier, it's so easy to get discouraged when we compare ourselves to other artists without even knowing their own journey. However, what we see in most cases is just their finished product. We don't know all the steps that it took for them to get to that point. We don't know how many hours it took for them to come up with that piece, how many versions that they may have had to scrap to get to that point. To get to their skill level, it likely took them many, many years of practice and many quote-unquote failed drawings. It goes back to my earlier point of that we artists tend to be quite hard on ourselves. I think sometimes we let our fear of failure hold us back from actually improving. It's this mental health aspect that can really make it hard to get out of this destructive cycle. 
But when it comes to art, the whole goal here is to get our thoughts down on a piece of paper or on our digital canvas of our choosing. I'm not saying that that fear will ever truly go away, I don't really think it does. But I think we need to slow down and think. If you're a complete beginner and you're not really doing this for money, there's not really any consequence to quote unquote failing a drawing. Failing something doesn't really reflect your works as an artist. Even professional artists have days where they feel like they can't really draw anything. What I mean by embracing our failures is to understand what went wrong with our particular piece and trying to fix those mistakes so it doesn't happen again. After all, if you learn something from what went wrong, then it truly isn't a failure. It might take a couple tries, it might take a couple hundred tries, but as long as you keep going, you will learn something and your skill as an artist will improve. Part of being an artist is learning how to embrace our failures and continue to move on. We are still human after all, so chasing perfection all the time definitely won't lead to anywhere good. This was something that I struggled with like for many years actually. Around 2020 I had one of the worst art slumps ever and it really took me a whole year to get out of that funk. But when I did, I actually felt a lot better with my art and I continued to improve. Obviously I still have my ups and downs, but I understand that it's temporary and I just need to work past them. I can't get upset when something doesn't go my way, I just have to pick up the pieces and keep moving. That's all you can really do. The goal of having a series that reflects my characters outweighs any particular fear that I have about not doing something right. And that leads me to a question, what are your goals as an artist and what are you working towards to achieve those goals? I would love my community to be a place where people can share their goals and aspirations without feeling judged for it. I want people to embrace their creativity more and that's part of the reason why I want to become an art instructor in the first place. Coming to terms with my own creativity is why I started to become a YouTuber as well as a streamer. I was a short form video creator for a while but that wasn't really adequately expressing how I felt with art and I felt like I needed to have the space in order to do so. So again, to support my channel, a like and a subscribe would mean the world to me. So to sum everything up, go into art with a goal in mind. Learn to study things that may get you closer to your goal. Take pictures and observe everything because inspiration can pretty much come from anywhere. Develop a habit of being creative, but not at the cost of your physical slash mental health. You don't have to spend a fortune to get into art. It has never been more accessible for more people than it is today. And most importantly of all, embrace failure as that is part of learning as an artist. All of your favorite artists likely have many sketches and paintings that never saw the light of day because they were perceived to be failures by them. But as long as you're learning something that you didn't know before, then any failure is technically a success. I don't think anyone says that the artist's journey is easy, but there's ways that can actually improve your quality of work as well as your enjoyment of said work. And while I could go on a million years about all the ways that helped me improve, I figured I would share the ones that I feel like would be the most helpful for someone starting out. If you have any other tips for beginner artists, then please again let me know down in the comments if you're interested. But for now, that's all I want to say for this video, so goodbye and take care and enjoy your artistic journey. I will be back with more videos and art streams and content, so please stay tuned.